So, I am sitting here on the first day of summer in 2023, thinking about Quartzsite, Arizona. And I'm pretty far away from there. I'm in Pahrump, Nevada, which is about, oh, an hour, a little less than an hour outside of Las Vegas. And I'm kind of stuck here because I'm getting some medical stuff done that's taken many, many weeks, so I have to be in one place. But there are worse places to be. I like Pahrump. I like Pahrump a lot. I liked it enough so I bought into a membership RV park here because I figure I'm going to be spending a few months every year in Pahrump. But I miss Quartzsite. So, what the hell is Quartzsite? What's the big deal with Quartzsite? Why do I miss Quartzsite? Well, today, that's what I'm going to talk about. Quartzsite is a town in Arizona. It's off Interstate 10. You got to look in southern Arizona, find Interstate 10 that goes straight into Los Angeles. In just a few short miles short of the California border, you're going to find um, the town of Quartzsite. And yeah, you can look it up to see what the, the population is. I'm not sure exactly, seven, 8,000 people in that neighborhood. I'm not really too sure, but it's clearly a small town. And it remains a small town now. It's very small, very slow, not much going on. But these, this changes dramatically in the winter. It's pretty damn hot now in Quartzsite. I'm gonna guess it's probably close to 100 degrees if it hasn't already cracked that already. But um, in general, in the winter, there are days in the 60s and 70s, nights in the low 40s, high 30s. It's a pleasant place to spend time. Well, surrounding Quartzsite is desert. And the vast majority of that desert is owned by the federal government um, uh, and controlled under the Bureau of Land Management and you will refer you you will hear that referred to as blm land blm land means bureau of land management it means that it's owned by the federal government and um, as a citizen we have recreational access to those lands in general blm land i can camp on it for 14 days straight and then i have to move a designated number of miles away from where i'm camping and it depends on the location but i'd say it's some between 20 and 30 miles Around Quartzsite, there's a pretty big exception to that. The uh, federal government has taken four of these big areas, these big BLM areas um, that are south of the town of Quartzsite, and they designate them as, them as uh, long-term visitor areas. And you'll hear them referred to down there as LTVAs. Right? And here's the difference. You can pay one of two fees to stay there, you can pay $40 and you can stay for two weeks or you can spend $180 and that's good for the season and the season starts on September 15th and I believe it ends on April 15th. So you have that from the middle of September to the middle of April, um, you can stay on that land and you don't have to move so much of an inch for that whole time. Or you can choose to go from one LTVA to the other. Remember I said there were four there. But no, there's more. There's a couple of LTVAs down near Yuma and a couple in California. Forgive me, I don't know what the exact number of LTVA areas is. It's somewhere around seven or eight. And the pass that you buy is good for all of them. So you can rotate around if you want. The other thing, um, uh, LTVAs generally have services. Not all of them have all services, but the services are uh, fresh water stations, um, dump stations, um, and vault toilets, uh, and garbage pickup dumpsters. Um, the one in uh, Quartzsite that has all those is uh, uh, La Posa South, and they are constructing across the street in um, it's in the LTVA across the street from, and I believe it's, well, I'm going to have to look this up, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to have to put it on the screen there. But I believe it's uh, Tyson Wells or Tyson Wash LTVA 
um, is across the street and they're building like eight lanes of brand new um, dump stations. So that eventually will have all the services just like La Posa South. And actually I heard La Posa South when they do that, um, they're going to close down the dump stations because they're so old in, in La Posa South. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So for $180, you get all those services and you don't have to move. So still, what's so great about that? Um, why do so many people come to Quartzsite in the winter? And how many people is a lot? Well, they say close at the peak in January, and January is the peak, close to a million RVers come to Quartzsite and stay at least a night. And it's like, how is that possible? When you, when you get there and it's busy and you look over the vista of the desert with these designated areas and you see people parked as far as the eye can see, you start, you start becoming a believer. Right. So, but what's the big deal? What's the draw? Well, there are things to do in Quartzsite, for sure, especially during the winter when vendors come in from all over the country and frankly all over the world and they sell all sorts of wares in a giant flea market in Tyson Wells and there is one of the biggest RV shows in the country that happens um, like, the sec like the third week of second or third week of January and it's a huge gigantic tent and it's exciting and they're vendors inside and outside and there's all sorts of activity and there are actually believe it or not this little town there are good restaurants in there um there's two kind of two good pizza places there's a good chinese place and then there are like street vendors everywhere in the winter with all kinds of there is a woman that makes um this uh fresh bread um sourdough bread this huge she was charging nine dollars last year it's a huge giant loaf of sourdough bread if you're a single person you'll never make you'll never be able to finish it before it starts going bad um nine dollars and she sells out by there like you go to buy and there's a line of people she sells out within a couple hours every day um there are lots of vendors like that so now i'm probably beginning you're probably thinking well this is sounding a little bit interesting there is entertainment there is um there's kind of an outdoor bar venue in right near where that big tent rv show is and all the vendors are that um, they have entertainment in there and the entertainment is usually great right? it's a lot of fun um there's a couple of local small grocery stores to get your groceries and people say oh it's so expensive there it got it's not that much more expensive than a regular grocery store. It is because you're in a small town, they're a small grocery store, yeah. But it's not earth-shatteringly different. It's not life-changingly different. You'll get over it, trust me. And not only will you get over it, but there's a way to get out of it and under it. What I do is my good stuff, like any meats that I buy and any brand name stuff that's important to me, I buy in these two. The grocery stores are called the Road <laughs> Um, uh, it's the, the Roadrunner and the Coyote, and it's no coincidence. They mean that, the Roadrunner and the Coyote, they're competitors. They both have their positive points, for sure. You know, one has really good meat, the other one has really good prepared food. You can figure that out on your own. Yeah, there are two other, like, grocery warehouse places. What do I mean by that? These are primarily dry goods that they sell where they're buying in bulk stuff that like just expired that the big name grocery stores can't put on. So the Cheerios expired in June and it's July. The big store, big name grocery stores can't, they don't sell expired drive goods. So what do they do? They sell that stuff by the pallet. So you go into a regular grocery store, even a cheap one, and you may pay six or seven dollars for a box of brand name breakfast cereal you go into this place two bucks two dollars and most of the things that you find in there dry goods um so they're expired and trust me there's no danger 
for expired dry, no health dangers. And there's really very little taste danger. So what I do is I buy all my dry goods and I save a butt ton of money on that stuff. And then I go to the regular grocery store, the, the, the Coyote and the Roadrunner. I go there and um, spend a little bit of extra money. But if you really, you just can't do that and you got to go to a brand name store, you can take a, like a 25 minute drive to Blythe, California and there's a friggin' Safeway there and you can feel wonderful about that. I think it's a Safeway. It's either Safeway or an Albertsons. I forget which. Or you can drive a little bit further um, to Parker, Arizona. There's a Walmart, there's a Safeway, there's all the familiar places, but you don't need to. So back to, okay, I'm starting, you're probably starting to see why this place may be cool, but I haven't hit on, well, here's, here's one other thing that I, that I discovered that I really love doing. And you know, um, I got to Quartzsite last year and I didn't have dental insurance. I had just retired, not 65 yet. I didn't get bent down and I could have bought dental insurance. I didn't. And I needed some dental work done, and they gave me an estimate when I was in the States in the summer of like six to $7,000 to do what I needed done. That's a lot of money to me. So I kept hearing, you know, if you go to Algodonas, Mexico, which is pretty close to Quartzsite, um, the town is filled with dentists, and you can, it's a great thing to do. So I'm going to do that. So I drove the almost an hour down to Yuma, went outside Yuma, parked in the parking lot at the border, walked across the border, and boom, there are more dentists per capita in this little tiny Mexican town than anywhere on the planet. I got a recommendation for a great dentist. It's called Borderline Dental is where I went. And it's called Borderline Dental because it's like the first one that you see when you walk in. And they did my six or $7,000 worth of dental work for just, just shy of $1,500. And big bonus. I loved going to Algodonas. You walk into this Mexican town and you wonder, is it safe? Yeah, it's safe. It's only a few square blocks. Their survival is the generosity and the money of Americans coming across the border to spend their money. So they go to great lengths to ensure that no visitor is ever harmed in any way. There's a huge police presence and um, the, the, the bigger protection are the people that live and work there keep an eye out and they don't tolerate anyone harassing a visitor. It just doesn't happen. And the people are so full of joy and kindness that it's intoxicating when you go down there. So I can get cheap dental work. Um, I was taking a diuretic um, for my blood pressure and I could get a year's worth of medication and one of the pharmacies without a prescription a year's worth for like 10 bucks it was ridiculous so you can you don't need a you, you can't get controlled substances well actually you can get controlled substances but they will warn you um, you will go to jail if they catch you bringing that controlled substance over the border um, uh, back into the United States so it's a super, super bad idea to do that. But non-controlled substances yet require a um, prescription. Um, you don't need the prescription and the government doesn't care what, as long as it's reasonable quantities, right? Um, personal use quantities, they don't care. Um, one of the big savings is I, I have people that have, have inhalers, albuterol inhalers, and it's like pennies on the dollar down there for the inhalers. So. Also inexpensive liquor. And here's the next big one is uh, glasses. So here I have my glasses that you can see they're transition lenses. They go to um, sunglasses. They are um, reader glasses and they have the special protection and the scratch resistance. It's the full Monty for glasses. Now I tell you, these lenses are not glass glass. They're plastic, okay? Um, I, I think that um, real glass glasses, I don't, I, they may be available down there. I'm not sure where, but they would be more expensive. But these glasses were like $100. Where are you going to do better than that? And the food is amazing. And like I said, it, 
I probably went to Algodonis last season eight to ten times. Now, granted, my dental work was pretty extensive, so many of those trips were I would get like a cavity done at a time and stuff like that. I was stretching it out. I didn't want to sit in the chair for six hours. But otherwise, I was going down there with friends and having a great, great time. So that's a great city. And Yuma is a very interesting city with a lot of stuff to offer to that's not far from Quartzsite. So here we are. I've been talking about Quartzsite for 15 minutes, and I've talked about all the things that are available around it. Um, short, short trips to um, Blythe, California, to Parker, Arizona, and Lake Havasu. Lake Havasu is other, another 15, 20 minutes beyond um, Parker. So all within approximately an hour of Quartzsite, there are lots of things, lot, lots of interesting different towns and cities that you're going to go visit. I haven't mentioned the biggest thing yet. I haven't mentioned the thing that gets me sitting in Pahrump on the first day of summer dreaming about returning to Quartzsite. And I'll give it to you in one word. Community. The people that you meet boondocking are some of the most generous, kindest, most wonderful people I've met in my life. In my circle of friends that are love RVs and travel in RVs and go to Quartzsite grows and grows and grows and grows. And it feels so good. Right? And <clears throat> I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, or if you're rich or you're poor, we're all there, all of us together. Right? Um, and it's a really good feeling. So then the question comes up, well, that sounds great, but how do I camp with people if I come there and I don't know anyone? Well, it's actually pretty easy. Now, the first time I came to Quartzsite, I wasn't retired yet. I came out, um, I was in Quartzsite in, for 10 days, and I uh, was following YouTube channels, and this uh, uh, two YouTube tubers were having a basically a camp out and we're inviting people to join them it was on blm land it wasn't in one of the ltvas so i went out there and followed their directions went out there and of course they're welcoming everybody and they have a campfire every night and i met them and i met lots of people and it was a lot of fun it was a kind of a temporary thing but in the ltvas there are camping communities that basically start at the beginning of the season and go through the whole season. And um, by definition, these communities are open, right? Because if I'm on this federal land, as long as I'm not within 15 feet of you, I can camp anywhere I please. Now, it's not cool, it's not proper etiquette to just go up and pick a bunch of people and camp 15 feet from them. Right. Legally, you can do it. Ethically, not a good idea. Um, it's a good idea to come to groups of people that are known to accept new people without question. How do I find that? Friggin' Facebook. Facebook, Quartzsite, search. You will find a bunch. Now, there, there's um, one that I, I am, uh, that I spent a lot of time at, uh, and it's called the spot and the sort of the leader of that um, uh, community is randy the mobile traveler and you can um, get to his uh, youtube page just by typing in randy the mobile traveler and um uh his, his you know I, I interviewed him once if you if you go back and you into my videos you can find an interview with him um, I asked him, we said, well, what, what does a person need to do to come and join this community here? And he's like, nothing. I can't tell people where to camp. Anybody's welcome to come here and plop their ass down wherever they want to. And he says, everyone's welcome. Everyone's welcome here. And it's true, everybody is welcome. And he, uh, by where he sets up, he usually sets up a sort of a little tent facility that um, has a little kitchen in it 
in couches, in tables for people to eat, and more importantly for him to play poker. They have low stakes poker games every week, and they have parties, they have karaoke nights, and just a lot of people sitting around campfires having a lot of fun. You can go to the, his camp and you can be a drinker or you can be a non-drinker. You can be a pot smoker or not a pot smoker. There's very little judgment. There's another thing, there, and there are communities like this all over the LTVAs. Um, and you just need to get on social media, find out where they are, and just go join those communities. There's an, a, another place, and you can even find this place on Google Maps. It's called the Lit Cactus. And this has only started a couple of years ago by this guy that um, found a campsite he liked in La Posa South. And he, he uh, dropped his fifth wheel there and camped. And it was next to this big Socorro uh, cactus. And he really loved it. And he said, that would look really cool lit up. So he, he lit it with some like LED lights at night and had a campfire. And you know people noticed it. A couple of people came around. And... Um, it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. Now there's a Facebook page that tells you what nights he's, they're, they're having campfires there, um, when they're having events. Um, they've even got to the point where they're not just having camping events there, they're actually doing things for they're doing fundraisers for nonprofits and it's blown into this big thing. You go to one of the Lit Cactus camp, camps and you meet all kinds of people there are musicians and dancers and drummers and it's just it, it's an amazing thing so that's the thing that is so cool about quartzite community and connection with other human beings and a um a lack of judgment and i'm not here to tell you that this is a perfect utopian place in the desert where there isn't any judgment and there aren't any assholes there are but it's far fewer than really any other place that I've hung out. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and these are really, all these things that I've been telling you are really good reasons to spend time in Quartzsite. And I hope that you do. And I hope that I see you there in the 2023-2024 season in Quartzsite, Arizona. Y'all take care.